All right, so today I'm going to share with you um, some possibilities in terms of accessing functional transitions of your system of interest beyond what you can access with conventional simulations, whether it be with quantum mechanical models or with coarse grain models or polarizable force fields like what Boris just talked about. Um, and I was asked to talk about protein binding simulations, so I'm going to use that as a case study here. Um, so in terms of molecular machinery, uh, there's protein binding events are part of these cascades of biological pathways out there. This is just one example in a fight or flight response where you have this adrenaline molecule. Let me see if I can find the, well, I can't access the laser pointer. You have this adrenaline molecule that binds to the top of that receptor on the outside of the um, membrane outside of the cell and there's this cascade of protein binding events that leads to the productive to the production of cyclic A and P and then that leads to your muscle contraction. So the identity of those blobs there, but we won't worry about that, but it's just the cascade of interactions. And what my lab has been working on for over a decade is to access some of these interesting motions like protein binding at all atom level. Um, and so the question of whether molecular dynamic simulations can actually capture how proteins change their shapes when they bind one another. What you're seeing here are two proteins that are coming together for this handshake in a box of water molecules. Um, and the, this is something that really wasn't feasible to do with conventional simulations. And so this is something that needed some advanced simulation techniques. But what are the timescales that uh, your usual MD simulations can access? Typical computing resources go up to a microsecond. Um, and so you can, use, you can look at some interesting things like the loop motions of proteins or hinge bending. And then there's a specialized supercomputer out there called Anton that can go up to milliseconds. Um, but that's really still barely capturing the faster end of these much, these very interesting processes like uh, protein folding, uh, protein binding over there would range from multi microseconds to seconds, uh, large conformational transitions in proteins that are involved in switching, for instance. Um, and then uh, the problem with the conventional way of running simulations is that even if you did run a large number of those simulations starting from some initial state, like the unbound state for a binding process, where each of these spheres is an individual simulation, you only have a small chance of any of those simulations making it over the barrier. So we're spending most of the simulation time wasting it on just waiting around for some lucky transition to make it over the barrier. And so how could we be even more clever about this? It turns out that the barrier crossing process is actually orders of magnitude faster than the time you spend waiting around. And this is why these are called rare events when you have a free energy barrier, is that they are infrequent but relatively fast. So how can we be smarter about capturing those events? One way that you could do this is using weighted ensemble molecular dynamics. This is something that my lab's been working on for the past decade or so. The idea is that you would define some kind of a progress coordinate towards your target state. You divide it up to, into bins, and then you run a large number of simulations in parallel and iteratively split them whenever uh, they enter these less visited regions in space. So you, you split these simulations to enrich for success, and every so often you terminate or merge simulations to save computing power. And because these individual simulations are weighted statistically in a rigorous way, we're not introducing any biasing forces in the simulation, so we actually get realistic kinetics out of it. So we get unbiased pathways from your initial to your target state with orders of magnitude greater efficiency than conventional MD. And when you get these pathways, they include every state along the 
uh, the process, including these transient states that are way too fleeting to capture from the experiment. And so this is something that is very valuable that simulations can provide uh, and that complement your experimental results. So my lab has scaled up this strategy in some open source software called WESPA. It stands for Weighted Ensemble Simulation Toolkit with Parallelization Analysis. It scales out to thousands of CPU cores or, um, and similarly out to uh, GPUs. Um, it's interoperable, so we designed it to interface with any Dynamics engine that you like to use. So with Molecular Dynamics engines, Monte Carlo, Brownian Dynamics, so anything that's stochastic, it's rigorous. Um, it can be applied at any scale. So even at the coarse grain level, there are certain projects that are just infeasible with conventional simulation. So my lab has um, published a study where we enhance the kinetics of the protein conformational switch by at least 30 fold with coarse grain models. And uh, we also reported what, to my knowledge, are the first protein peptide binding simulations to yield a rigorous on rate. And then finally, the last example is this protein-protein binding simulation in explicit solvent. That's the one that I showed you a movie of. This involves two bacterial proteins that come together very rapidly. So the Barney's Bar Star system. And this is something that uh, was very practical even uh, years ago in 2019. So hundreds of pathways in 10 days using 16 GPUs, and those were the GPUs back then. So we can uh, calculate the rate constant for the overall binding process, which is the K on there. And you can see the K on is in reasonable agreement with the experiment. Uh, but the power of the simulation also lies in calculating the rate constant for individual steps in the process. So we can calculate uh, the rate constant for that first step, which is the unbound proteins colliding to form this encounter complex where they're not quite in the right orientation, and that gives them a chance to reorient to the bound state. So when we calculate the rate constants for every individual step, that allows us to determine the rate limiting step. And it turns out the rate limiting step is that first step to form the encounter complex. And because we have these uh, ensembles of complete pathways going from the initial to the target state, based on those transient structures, we can identify residues, amino acid residues that are kinetically important. And so we found that these productive collisions that involve the two proteins uh, all have this one arginine 59 residue that in Barnase that contacts the bar star initially. And this is supported by stop flow kinetics experiments where you mutate the that arginine to an alanine and that reduces the on rate by more than ninefold. It reduces it by the most. Um, and then in terms of pathways, it's not trivial to compare pathways of variable lengths. And so we have developed a method called LPATH, which uses linguistics techniques, which are used for detecting plagiarism. And we applied it to this weighted ensemble simulation recently okay, with a drug unbinding from a, a buried cavity in the receptor. And you can see on the left there, there's two different pathway classes that we identified with their appropriate probabilities. Um, this was a case where we got hundreds of pathways and estimated a, an off rate for a seconds time scale process in two weeks using 16 GPUs. So quite doable. And these are our take home messages here is that using this weighted ensemble technique that enables routine simulations of these protein binding as well as unbinding processes. And a hallmark of this strategy is that we generate these complete pathways. And pathways are the mechanism. That's the most direct way of analyzing mechanism. And that provides us with transient structures for uh, rationally manipulating the kinetics. So thank you very for your attention. Happy to answer questions. Thank you so much. Okay, question, comment. Thank you. So your weighted ensemble method, is it similar to four-flux sampling with some specific 
yes, so probabilities is, assigned to each of the trajectories from which you pick? Stuff? Yeah, so that is also a splitting method like this, path sampling method. They differ in that weighted ensemble, you can actually adjust the progress coordinate on the fly as you're running the simulation because the statistical weights of these trajectories, they're completely independent of that. But there's different variants of these various approaches like forward flux sampling and they become more, they've converged more and more on some common solutions which look very weighted ensemble-like. Maybe this is kind of simple-minded, but uh, you showed one hill on that graph, yes. but there's an infinite number of hills. Yes. How do you know which one to climb? Yeah, I forgot to mention that that's an oversimplified illustration of what's going on. So you can see from protein binding that it's at least two steps, right? Um, so how do we know how many hills are worth binding, uh, worth um, surmounting? Um, so for any of these processes, the way that um, the main caveat for weighted yeah. ensemble is defining that progress coordinate. And it might change depending on which stage you are at in the process. And so we have ways of adaptively binning um, along the coordinate so we can know very quickly if we're reaching a dead end or not. Um, and yes, it is automatic, yeah. So it automates the placement of the bins. And if it's really not making progress after tens of iterations, then we know we should probably switch up the coordinate. Yeah. Other questions? Yeah, that's beautiful work. And, and I just want to ask a follow-up question. I mean, so along the pathways that you said, how much bias, how biasing is the pathway that you said along that, for that coordinate versus, you know, all the other pathways that maybe you didn't quite imagine? Does yeah. that narrow, focus you into only seeing certain things? So, yeah, so that's a good question. So there's no statistical bias in it. So meaning that any pathways that we generate, they are pathways that we would have generated if we ran as long as we needed to with a conventional technique. But the way that we term, decide to terminate trajectories, that can affect which pathways we've generated. And so we are working on ways of more wisely choosing which trajectories to terminate or merge. Yeah, so that's, there's, it still hasn't reached its full potential. Okay, and then we have the architecture prompt. Um, would you also say applicable to all of them potentially? Or yeah, like I think the first the three, the first especially the molecular Lego, Legos, I think when it, um, it's more further downstream in terms of looking at the functions of molecular machines. If, um, for instance, if you care about uh, the speed at which they're functioning and you want to manipulate that speed, Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. That's You're wonderful. welcome. Good.